This video film shows the development of a trap fishery for cuttlefish in the English Channel. The film shows the life history of the cuttlefish, how to distinguish males from females, how cuttlefish traps can be constructed, how they work underwater, and how to deploy the traps from a vessel. Most cuttlefish landed in the United Kingdom are caught by beam trawlers. Otter trawlers target cuttlefish in a similar way. Gill nets can also be used to catch cuttlefish. The largest cuttlefish migrate to inshore breeding grounds in the spring, in shallow areas from the Isle of Wight eastwards to Hastings. It is at these times that cuttlefish traps are most effective. Maturing cuttlefish are caught at various times on the inshore grounds all along the channel, their size depending on the point reached in their life cycles. The market for cuttlefish is mainly in France and Spain, and much of the gear technology used for the Hastings traps is based on very successful French trap fisheries in the Brittany region. The common cuttlefish, Sepia officinalis, belongs to the group of mollusks called cephalopods, which includes squid and octopus. Cuttlefish are easy to identify by their oval shape and undulating side fins along each side of the main body, which is also called the mantle. The mantle covers a hard bony structure called the sepian or cuttle bone. The cuttle bone is porous, filled with liquid and gas. By changing the proportion of liquid to gas, the animal can change its buoyancy. The head has a crown made up of eight arms, each with suction cups. These arms surround the mouth. They also hide two special tentacles, which are much longer than the arms, and have flattened ends, also equipped with suction cups. They are used by the cuttlefish to seize live prey and withdraw it so it can be held firmly. Cuttlefish have very well developed eyes and have excellent vision. They can change their body colour rapidly to blend in with the background for camouflage. Colour changes are also used for signalling to other cuttlefish, especially during courtship displays and mating. Cuttlefish use the two long undulating fins along each side of the mantle to move slowly through the water. The direction of undulation can be immediately reversed, making the animal very manoeuvrable indeed. This low speed type of movement is exploited when setting traps. Cuttlefish have another way of moving through the water. They can propel themselves very rapidly over short distances by expelling a jet of water from a siphon tube using powerful body muscles. This is usually an escape response and is often combined with the ejection of a dense cloud of black ink. The ink is secreted by special glands and gives a smokescreen effect while the animal makes good its escape. It's important to be able to distinguish males from females because it's common practice for fishermen to use a live female as bait in cuttlefish traps. This is a male. Male cuttlefish are usually darker in colour with much stronger body striping than a female. The outer arms that meet the head underneath each eye are heavily striped in males and are unstriped in females. This is a female. Females are usually smaller than males and have shorter, wider mantles and heads. The catch is separated into males and females. Males are boxed, ready for market, Females are kept alive in seawater, ready for use as bait. This seawater must be regularly changed to keep the females in good condition. The females are placed in the traps at the last possible moment before shooting the traps. In spring, cuttlefish gather to mate in shallow inshore waters, usually less than 30 metres deep. These areas are often close to bays and estuaries. 
Males actively seek out females and mating takes place in the head-to-head -head position when the male transfers sperm capsules across to the female. Soon after mating, the female is able to lay fertilized eggs. Female cuttlefish lay their eggs on any suitable object that they can wrap the individual egg cases around. Eggs are often found in bunches on the bars and mesh of cuttlefish traps. Each female lays several hundred eggs over a few days. The young hatch as miniature adults and grow rapidly, feeding initially on small crustaceans before progressing to fin fish. When feeding, cuttlefish either ambush their prey or pursue and grab their prey. Since cuttlefish feed mainly on live prey, it would be impractical to use food as the attractant in traps. This is why fishermen take advantage of the couple's mating behaviour by using a live female as a lure. This technique entices both males and females into the traps. In addition, French fishermen have found that cuttlefish can be attracted by artificial lures. White, shiny objects, such as this piece of plastic, are often put into traps for this purpose. It's been found that females used as lures need to be changed on every haul. This is because the aggressive mating behaviour of the cuttlefish can lead to injury. Aggression in the confines of a trap can lead to damage that may affect catch quality. Cuttles reach adulthood within 18 to 22 months, when they are 20 to 30 centimetres in mantle length and weigh between 1 and 2 kilograms. It is these large, mature animals that are the target of the trap fishery. Cuttlefish breed only once and then die. Those animals which don't breed in their first year are believed to breed in the following year. So, why use traps? A trap fishery for cuttlefish is attractive to the inshore fishermen because it can be worked on a daily basis by small vessels with limited engine power. Trap fishing has much less effect on the seabed than fishing with beam trawls, otter trawls and other heavy towed gears. Cuttles that are caught in traps don't contain sand and grit, unlike animals which have been caught in a trawl. Traps are selective for large animals and market demand is for large animals which usually fetch good prices, whereas trawls are less discriminating. Traps are most effective during the spring breeding season on inshore grounds. Some of these grounds are inaccessible to larger trawlers due to local regulations. The development of trap fisheries in these areas is therefore a logical step. Traps are especially useful for fishermen in Hastings who use their small inshore vessels to work trammel nets for sole and place. Traps catch cuttlefish when the presence of spider crabs on the fishing grounds prevents the use of these trammel nets. Spider crabs are very spiny creatures and cause a lot of damage to trammel nets set on the seabed to catch flatfish. Once spider crabs get into a net, they can be notoriously difficult to remove. The cuttlefish trap fishery therefore presents a welcome alternative that can be turned to during these times. So, what kinds of traps are available? Of the many different designs of cuttlefish traps used around the world, there are three which have been shown to work well in the shallow waters of the English Channel. These three designs have been successfully used in the Brittany region of France. The most recent of these designs is a square pyramid shape with two entrances which was developed for use in the St Malo Bay area. It is this design which was used for the development of a trap suitable for catching cuttlefish on the English side of the channel.
The French pyramid design is made of a square framework of round section steel bar. The base of the framework is about a metre wide. The top is about 70 centimetres wide and it stands about 40 centimetres tall. The framework is welded together and to minimise corrosion it can either be galvanised or plastic coated. The trap framework is covered with light nylon netting. French fishermen have found that white netting is attractive to cuttlefish so this was used for the English version of the trap. A mesh size of 70 millimetres is commonly used in France. Using larger mesh may allow small cuttlefish to escape, making the trap more size selective. Larger mesh can also allow bycatches of unwanted species like spider crabs. This makes the traps less species selective. Unwanted species may cause damage to cuttlefish, possibly affecting catch quality. Smaller mesh sizes, especially with thick twines, get clogged easily with cuttlefish eggs and weed growth. This discolours the netting and obscures any visual attractants inside the trap. Smaller mesh sizes are also more difficult to rig onto the framework. Two cone-shaped entrances are fitted on opposite sides of the trap. These are generally made of wire mesh. Galvanised chicken wire was found to be particularly effective in the French fishery and worked well in the English fishery. The entrances must allow cuttlefish easy access into the trap and limit the opportunity for escape. Being highly manoeuvrable animals, it's not impossible for them to find their way out again. Because of this, new entrance designs are being tried continually. The trap is emptied of its catch through a flap in the netting. This flap is kept tightly closed while the trap is set on the seabed. The trap is mounted on a heavy steel skid. This skid protects the bottom of the trap from seabed abrasion. It ensures that the trap lands upright on the seabed and remains stable in use. It also makes an attachment point for a bridle line. Further protection to the framework can be given by covering it in rope or strips of rubber. A finished trap of this type weighs about 18 kilograms and can be handled quite easily by one person. Refinements are being made continually to the basic trap design. The uncanny ability of cuttlefish to find their way out of the two entrance trap led to the development of a trap with a third entrance which leads into a separate compartment or parlour holding the female lure. This third entrance makes escape more difficult from the parlour. So, how are these traps fished? Cuttlefish traps are rigged in strings or fleets in a similar way to gill nets and trammel nets. The strings of traps are anchored at each end and the position of the string is marked with dam floats at the surface. 
The fleet length, the number of traps and the spacings between traps can all vary depending on the working arrangement of the boat and on fishing conditions. These boats are using five fleets, each having ten traps which are spaced 20 fathoms apart. Each trap is rigged to the main ground line using short lengths of rope. These strops are connected to a bridle which is fixed to the trap. The strop which connects the trap to the main ground line is made in two sections. One half of the strop, about a metre long, is spliced into the ground line. The other end of this rope has an eye spliced into it. The other half of the strop is connected to the bridle on the trap. The free end of this rope has a strong nylon toggle spliced into it. This forms a quick release connection, making the arrangement more flexible. The two halves of the strop are connected by passing the toggle through the eye splice, like a button in a buttonhole. The weight of the trap on the ropes makes sure they don't come apart. At sea, traps must be stacked carefully on the deck. This ensures that the traps are shot in the correct order. The shooting operation is more difficult when space is limited. The traps are shot in a line, following the direction of the tide. They are normally left to fish for 24 hours unless bad weather prevents subsequent recovery. Females used as lures rarely survive periods longer than 24 hours in the traps and extended soak times will risk loss of catch quality. The recovery or hauling operation involves the use of an hydraulic line hauler. The hauler retrieves the ground line over an open-sided block which is suspended from a davit. As each trap reaches the surface, it is retrieved by a crewman and brought on board for emptying. The traps are then stacked carefully in sequence, ready for shooting again. Once on board, this valuable catch should be treated with respect. Cuttlefish should be boxed and regularly wetted to remove excess ink and keep them cool. Covering the boxes helps reduce the drying effect of the sun and the wind. To maintain catch quality, it is important that the catch reaches the market with the minimum of delay. This video film has described trap fishing for cuttlefish off the south coast of England. The film has been based on information and experience gained by Seafish Gear Technologists in collaboration with commercial fishermen from both England and France. The film has given an insight into the life history of the cuttlefish and how it may be exploited responsibly using traps. This method has been illustrated by a combination of unique underwater observations together with footage taken during commercial fishing trips. This film would not have been possible without the assistance of local fishermen at Hastings. Thank you.